Okay, um, Bob, Don, do you want to introduce this or how, how should sure. we start? Okay, okay. Uh, th this is the time and date set for a uh, public hearing with respect to an application submitted by Cuddy Partners LP for conditional use for property located on the north of Cecil Sturgeon Road, approximately 200 feet to the west of the intersection with Miller's Run Road, and also known as tax parcel 486-S-11. Properties located in the PED, Planned Economic Development Zoning District. Proposed use is a landscaping business, which is known as GSL Landscaping. We'll make part of the record uh, this evening, the application that's been submitted for the conditional use together with all the plans, as well as the review letters that have been issued in connection with um, the plans. And with that, as anybody that's going to testify this evening, um, please virtually stand and raise your right hand and um, I'll administer the oath. You swear by almighty God, search of all hearts, the testimony that you're going to provide this evening is the truth, nothing but the truth. So she'll answer to God in the last great day. I do. I do. Okay, now with that, um, I'd ask that the township engineer um, um, review this application and... Um... Okay, uh, this is Don Housley on behalf of KU Resources, a consulting engineer for the township. Uh, commissioners, what you're looking at this evening is a contracting business which is uh, what the applicant is requesting as a conditional use. This is a PED yeah. zone property. And uh, because it's in the PED, you must first approve the use. And in this case, the contracting business is a conditional use. Later on this evening, you will then vote on the land development portion of the application, which is the landscaping business to be known as GSL landscaping. Um, once the contracting business is approved, this use of landscaping business becomes a permitted use in that district. So um, at its August 27th, 2020 meeting, the South Bay Planning Commission recommended the conditional use approval uh, being subject to satisfaction of the items in the uh, KU resource letter dated August 23rd, 2020. It also recommended, along with the conditional use, that the following modifications or waivers are recommended for approval. Um, and basically, most of these, as they occur in the zoning ordinance, are uh, requested as a waiver of the, this as an application requirement because the site is not open to the general public. So I will go through these quickly for you. Under 240-94E, which requires outdoor lighting, uh, the applicant is requesting that the lighting of the parking lot, the normal parking lot standards be waived. Again, as the, this site is not open to the public and will not be used at night. That would also then apply to subsections 240-94.F, 240-111.K, and 215, 39K, 33, all which are associated with lighting of a public parking lot. The next item to be the, uh, the waiver for is the requirements under Zoning Ordinance 24098A2, which requires a buffer yard A. Uh, the buffer yard A's waiver is being requested uh, due to existing vegetation that occurs in the area and slope. Uh, there's a cut slope against this adjoining property line with a single family use. Um, so this modification or waiver shall also apply to the other subsections which reference this under 240.95 subsection 34J, subsection 240.95 34M, and 240.98.A sub 5. Planning Commission also recommended a waiver to Zoning Ordinance 240-111I, which requires driveway and parking areas to be paved. Again, this property is not open to the public, so they're requesting that approximately halfway up the driveway from the public road, uh, the, the, the rest of the driveway be permitted to be retained in gravel. 
and the parking area above that and in front of their buildings be gravel uh, for their landscaping business. Um, along with that would be the associated section of 24111G talking about painted parking lines for spaces and things such as that, of course, that you couldn't do on a gravel parking lot. So anything related to that would also be waived. And then finally, the applicant requested a waiver to Ordinance 7 of 2018, known as the Stormwater Ordinance, Article 4, Subsection 502H, which allows for the use of a level spreader for the discharge of stormwater runoff through the use of a waiver issued by you, the Board of Commissioners. So that was the final and requested waiver that was in the Planning Commission recommendation letter. However, today, in reviewing the application for tonight's meeting, I'm going to add one additional to that, and that is under subsection 250, 21563, which requires concrete survey monuments to be set on all external property corners. Uh, we agree with this request. Um, except that uh, the site plan does, was, does refer to a couple of concrete monuments to be set, and we recommend that to be accepted if they allow for iron pins to be placed in, on all other corners in lieu of those concrete monuments, which is fairly standard for uh, what we've waived in the past. So that pretty well summarizes the Planning Commission's recommendation and an explanation of what we're doing. Just Pat Cooper, can you just briefly identify what improvements are going to be erected in the property in connection with this proposed use? Yes, the, the parcel is approximately 27 acres. It's wedged between Cecil Sturgeon uh, Road and the Southern Beltway project. So it really is an ideal location for a contractor's yard. It won't be visible from, uh, by the public from South Fayette somebody on the Southern Beltway could look down and possibly see the building, but at, at 60 miles an hour wouldn't, wouldn't uh, see much. Uh, there will be a 16,000 square foot uh, office and garage building built in two phases, a contractor's yard and a small uh, covered area for storage outside. I think it's 5,000 square feet. So it's, it's uh, Don gave a good description. We're just going to do some grading to get a levelish pad, put a couple structures on it, and it'll be a contractor's yard. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Does, does any member of the uh, board have any questions relative to this application? No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay, hearing none, does, does any member of the public that's uh, listening and viewing this hearing have any questions? I do. Okay, please identify, please identify yourself by name and also address. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, this is the first time I've ever Zoomed. So I am Laura Sesterich and I live on Cecil Sturgeon Road. And I'm concerned about um, having access, our only exit from our home is, is through the um, underpass going to Miller's Run Road. And that is supposed to be our um, emergency exit is through that property. And from what I am reading, that that's going to close and there's going to be some kind of pond or something there. Are we still going to have access out the other side so we can get to Miller's Run Road if there is an emergency? Mr. Cooper, do you want to address that? Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. This, this parcel is, is where the... Um... Uh, the, the contractor has been uh, staging construction for the Southern Beltway, and there, there's tr there's uh, construction trailers there. Are you yes. saying that? That's you, right across from our house. And, and you have rights to to cross this property. There there is a right of way that goes. Um, there used to be homes there, and there is a right of way that goes through there. You cut off our access out the other side of Cecil Sturgeon Road when this highway came through and um, our only way out is through this underpass and if anything happens with that underpass we are we are basically a, a, an island um, yeah this this um, the the 
uh, Turnpike Commission cut that access off on Miller's Run Road. It was, was not the, uh, the property owner. That was the Turnpike Commission took that. Um, the underpass is, is not going to change in the driveway that is currently there is going to be the driveway for this, this landscaping business. Well, no, there are two driveways. There, there is one right across from our home on Cecil Sturgeon Road. And there is, it goes through, it was, it was actually a paper road um, that was a right away. And we, we addressed this all at a public meeting before this, this all started occurring. But right now, if anything happens at that underpass, we are, we are trapped. We could not get emergency vehicles. We could not get out. And from what I understand, this is cutting off our access to our, our only other exit out. Well, the, 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 the access to Miller's Run Road through the site was, was already taken. Well, I could have got there if, if you know, or, or an emergency vehicle could have got to me that way. But I, I, I'm just surprised that this is, this is coming up because um, we were assured that we would have emergency access. There were, there were, we had two, we had one end of our road, we had a second end of our road. Now we've, we're a dead end um, and we had been assured that if something happened with this underpass, we would still have emergency access but now we don't did, did who assured you that was was that uh, john koski or is that the turn no no it was not john koski but uh we were at a public meeting the, the beltway meeting okay well it, i think there's confusion the, the beltway there's... would have reserved a an, an easement if that would, were the case pardon i believe that the beltway would have acquired an easement off of uh, Cuddy Partners' property, if that was the case. Well, should I stop? Should I stop down and and talk to you in person about it so that there's less confusion? L Laura, this is Don Housley, the consulting uh, working for the consulting engineer. The the access you feel that you're being cut off from. Why? What? What? What with this site plan do you feel is cutting that off? Is it the stormwater basin they're proposing? Um, or because down near your, down near Miller's Run Road, I don't see a lot of activity other than a storm pond. Have you, have you viewed the site plan? I don't have that image. I wish I could share that with everyone. I don't have the site plan. Uh, John, John is. John, is it part of the approval that's later in the meeting? Is, is that an attachment to the agenda? We can pull it up that way? Yes, I think it is. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the conditional use, I don't think, but maybe we can uh, uh, talk. John, if you go to your I'll agenda. To John in the meantime, before the, the regular meeting. Yeah, I don't think we have any image of it. Pat, um, when, you, Pat, when you did the plan, you didn't come across anything in the title chain with respect to any access easement through this property? No. For her? No. Well, there, there's always been access. There, there has been legal access. It was, uh, I, I forget what they called it, some kind of, and it, you know, I, I still have papers from, um, maps from South Fayette describing it i forget what they called it it was like a paper road or yeah there there, there may have been a a uh, a private road through no it wasn't private it was it was public it was definitely public it was um people could drive through it anytime they wanted to without being on on private property we're we're trapped now i mean we have we have uh you know this underpass and and should anything happen with a train or the trestle, we're, we're what are we gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna, uh, for the regular meeting, I'll be talking to John in the meantime. 
just to see. Yeah, it. okay, so Pat, if we have to push this toward the end of the agenda, I don't know where exactly it hits, then, you, you know, just, just let us know, okay? Yeah, but the, the conditional use that has that has nothing to do with the the use. No, but, that, no, yeah. and 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 I recall from the the land development plan, you, there's nothing's changing and submit a subdivision plan on this, right? Correct. Uh, Mr. Barrett, I I might suggest one thing. Just before the meeting, I downloaded your agenda. I have a copy of it here. It's is on the screen, Don. Is that is that right off the internet? Because there's there was some additional exhibits on the one I got online. Um, that's, that's, this is what you're looking at. This is from the website. It's online. Okay. okay. There's, what, side there's, the, what side of the toll road is, is uh, GSL going to be on, the right side or left side? If you're standing on 50 looking toward um, Cecil Sturgeon and, and uh, Cecil Risen, what side of the toll road would it be on, right or left? The left, left, between left. Cecil Sturgeon and the the uh, toll road. Okay, all right. Because I mean, she's right. There is a dead end up there, but I didn't see why there would be a a cut off from the access there. Yeah, um, there there was. I, I, I'm going to say it now. I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure that there's not a public road through there. People may have cut through there because it was convenient, but there, yeah. I don't think this shows up on any maps, any deeds, or anything. Right, and the, and the turnpike can't make commitments on personal property that they don't own yeah. or have to. Yeah. And they, they cut off access. Correct. Yeah, because yeah, she's right. It goes up in a dead end and you have to come back out. So she's right there. The only way in is through the trestle. So, I mean, I don't think there's anything that's going to limit anyone from going through the trestle at all, right? No, no. She's, yeah. she's worried if the, the bridge collapses. Or, or a train, a train derails, or I mean, things, things like that happen, and you don't think they're ever going to happen to you. But if they do, you know, I, I have to be prepared. Well, I, I guess the question is: Is there a legal right to go on Mr. Koski's property for access? And so, what we're going to do here is, Mr. Cooper's going to talk to Mr. Koski and try to determine if there is any legal access through his property for, for your benefit. And then uh, we'll address this um, in the regular part of the meeting when this matter comes up on the agenda for approval. And when will that be? Uh, if, you just, if you just hang on, probably in the next half hour, 45 minutes or so. All right. Okay, now with that, does anybody else have any questions or comments? The, the only other thing I might suggest is if uh, Pat uh, Cooper, if you could send a PDF of the um, land development plan or for existing conditions over to Mr. Barrett um, so that he can, he can show it to us later. I will do so. Yeah, if you email me something, Pat, I can share a screen and pull it up for folks. I will do so. John, do you think you'd be able to put maybe the county assessment to see what the maps look like on there and if there's any road or access built onto there? Because don't they list easements when you're looking at that property through the county assessment? No, Gwen, they do not. In the, okay. They show public roads. Well, yeah. that's, that's what I'm thinking. Is there, if there was a there, public there won't road be one. access? Yeah, there, there won't be one. Yeah. I mean, we can look. It will give us an, um, an image if you'd like. I mean, that'll give us an overview of the property, what we're actually looking at. Uh, in the meantime, in the, in the break here, I will get a snapshot of yeah. that image and send it over to John. Okay. That's probably better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, does anybody have any questions or comments? All right. With that, do we have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? I'll make that motion. I second it. All in favor, say aye, please. Aye. All right, that will conclude the public hearing with respect to this conditional use application. Thank you. I'll chime back in here at 15. Thank you. All right, um, so let's call this meeting to order. Um, Peggy, can I have roll call, please? Commissioner Dronosik? Commissioner Shrey? Here. Commissioner Horowitz? Here. Commissioner Rohde? Here. Commissioner Malash? Here. 
right, if we could all stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic which stands, stands one nation, one nation under God, under God visible, invisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right, at this time, we're going to have the presentation from the auditors, McGill, Power, Bell, and Associates. Yeah. Um, thanks, Commissioner Rohde. Just quickly before we go, Sean, I'll just introduce you. Um, Sean Emerson's here. He's a partner with um, our independent auditors. Um, they've completed our annual uh, independent audit um, of our financial statements. Um, we were a little delayed. We're a little, uh, this typically would happen probably in the summer months, but um, with COVID, uh, the, the in office part of the audit was uh, was delayed a little bit so um sean's going to run through uh, briefly i know he had an opportunity to, to talk with uh with commissioner malosh before the meeting um but um sean uh i, I can pull up your your okay. uh, your documents if you'd like or however you'd like to do it um do you want do i have the option to share this is what you're talking about right yeah yep yep Okay. All right. Well, thanks, John. And thank you, uh, Commissioner Malash, for taking the time to review uh, the audit results. I'll go through uh, as quickly as I can here. I know you got a lot on your agenda, uh, but I do uh, recommend that if you do have any questions about anything that I have uh, that I'll be talking about tonight, or if in your review of the financial uh, uh, audit information, uh, you can certainly send me an email directly or call me or you can go through John and I'm, I'm sure John can forward those on to me. Okay, uh, um, the type of opinion, uh, and, and again, the, the type of uh, the scope of the engagement is a financial statement audit. So the type of opinion that we issued is an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion. Um, material weaknesses, we did not note any. Uh, as part of doing the audit, uh, not only do we look at the financial statement uh, information and, and audit that information, we also look at internal controls. We don't issue an opinion but if there's something that comes to our attention, we're required to let you know about those. Uh, with that said, we did have a significant deficiency. We did review that with both John and the commissioner. Um, we did have other comments and recommendations just in doing our audit. We come across things uh, that could be done uh, differently or, or enhance how controls are currently being done and we reviewed those with John. Uh, significant accounting policies. Uh, we did not, uh, the, the township did not have any new policies this year that would affect how things were presented, uh, had, had how they would have been presented in the past. Significant estimates, um, just a two, there's a couple of them there, but just uh, the ones that probably stand out the most are the net pension liability in the OPEB or the uh, other post-employment benefit liabilities. So when you're looking at the financial statements, those are things to keep in mind that those are estimates. Uh, and then sensitive disclosures, uh, along with what I just said about the estimates, uh, the pension uh, plan, uh, that is a footnote that I recommend taking a look at, as well as the uh, OPEB or the retiree health plan. Difficulties encountered, we did not have any. Uh, corrected misstatements, uh, that summary is, is attached, but it's later, I won't go through the detail, but again, we did review that with both John and the commissioner. Um, uncorrected misstatements, uh, they, they have all been made and reflected in the financial statements. Uh, disagreements with management, we did not have any. Uh, management representation, uh, that will be a letter that John will be signing to and giving to us, basically telling us that he has given us everything that we need in order for us to issue the report. And then finally, uh, significant issues uh, discussed with management. Uh, we routinely have discussions with John throughout the year, and it's just a normal process. We actually encourage that. Uh, I think that should be a, a, a process that uh, um, it, 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 we, we rely on to, to discuss that, but it's not anything uh, other than just normal things that we discuss with John. All of this information is, is required to be communicated to you. That's why I'm, I'm going through that. Okay, John, if you flip to the, the next, uh, uh, yep, right here. Okay. So this is just the general fund, and we'll go through some of the financial highlights here. You can see at the top there, total assets uh, for the year. And again, this is just the general fund. We're 3,436,760. That is down slightly from the prior year. That, we'll see that in, in, a, in a couple of uh, items uh, that, that precede this, but basically 
there was a, uh, an excess of expenditures over revenues, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, total liabilities at the end of the year were 249,143. That is up from the prior year, and that's just a timing thing. Uh, you did have a P-card payable that was due at the end of the year, which was normal. And, and I also like to mention as well that uh, any liabilities that were outstanding at the end of the year uh, were current. You didn't have anything that was uh, stale or, or, or hadn't been paid for a period of time. Those were all current things. Um, the total fund balance, you can see there, total fund balance for the township is 2851570 That is down slightly, and I kind of alluded to that because there was a a, a, a shortfall of, uh, of revenues uh, under expenses. Um, that is a positive thing. Um, basically, that's just the arithmetical difference between your total assets and your liabilities. Um, and um, that certainly is, is a, a reflection on, on fiscal discipline that, that the township has that uh, fund balance uh, uh, in that in, at the end of 2019. Moving down to the tax or the total revenues there, you can see towards the bottom of the page there, total revenue for the, uh, uh, for the year were 13589724 That is up from the prior year. Um, primarily, it's in the tax section. Uh, taxes in the real estate taxes increased as well as the EIT. And with all of the development that's going on in the township, uh, that should make sense uh, for that increase. Um, a positive variance uh, in your budget to actual, you can see there you budgeted 12,116,000. Uh, the actual came in at 13,589,724. Moving down to the expenses, you can see there at the very top, total expenses for the year were 14,256,417. That is up from the prior year. Um, and, and as we've indicated there, there's a couple of items that, that caused the expenses to increase. Public safety was up, public works was up, uh, as well as health and sanitation. Uh, the other item that was that increased was the uh, transfer to the capital project fund there. You can see the total at the end of the year was uh, just uh, shy of $2.8 million. Um, moving down to the revenues in this case here, uh, expenditures did exceed revenues of 666,693. Keep in mind, you did have uh, a uh, capital projects transfer, as I mentioned, of $2.8 million. Moving into the uh, capital assets for the township, you can see uh, capital assets for the year were $17,578,817. That is down from the prior year, primarily related to the sale of Star City. You did have uh, several additions. Uh, probably the most noteworthy one as far as dollar amount was the Route 50 uh, construction of progress costs of 429217 Long-term debt for the township at the end of the year was 5283708 That is down from the, the prior year. Now, uh, I also like to mention that all the debt has been paid in accordance with the debt terms, so you don't have anything that's that shouldn't have been paid. Um, and it, as long as you didn't have any new debt, the uh, reduction should be expected. Um, we did talk about uh, earlier the net pension liability there. You can see total net pension liability for the township was 1164746 down from the prior year, primarily related to the market. That really is, is dictated by how the market's doing. Uh, the OPEB or the other, uh, other post-employment benefit liabilities there you can see was pretty consistent with the prior year, uh, a total liability of 339784 I would recommend uh, taking a look at the management discussion and analysis, uh, the part of the financial statement. It gives you a really good overview of what happened between the years and, and kind of explains uh, some of the changes uh, in a little bit more detail than we have here. That is all I wanted to go through. We do have beyond this a full copy of the financial statements. I'm not going to go through that. Uh, but again, if uh, either anybody has a question uh, from what I just went through, I can certainly answer that now or if later on um, you, you are taking a look at that information uh, and have a question, certainly you can uh, uh, pass your, shoot me an email or uh, go through John and I'm, I'm sure uh, John can get that to me and, and we'll get back to you with an answer. So any questions on any of that information? Thanks, Sean. Um, anyone have any Great. questions for yeah. the auditors for uh, Sean? Oh. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and those Thank you, everybody. will be um, uh, available to you guys as well. They're on the agenda here as drafts. And when, when we do have um, 
them all signed up and, and in final form, we'll make sure you guys get copies of them as well. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Sean and Lisa, I didn't ask you this yep. yesterday, but for the, yep. tra the transfer to the capital, the two point whatever, yep. um, is that transaction, is that a transaction that's dated in or an entry that's in December of 19? Uh, I believe so. I, I believe you. so. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? No, appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Great. Right. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's move on to public comment. Um, does anyone have any public comment for this evening? Okay. Since there's no public comment, let's move on to correspondence. Uh, copies of these are available for you guys. Um, we got some standard letters. We got a, um, a letter from the Auditor General. This is something uh, that's provided to every municipality. It's called a, um, a fiscal distress determination. It's, it's based on our, uh, it looks at our pension plan and, and the uh, funding uh, levels of it. Um, so based on, you know, our current funding levels, we're a distress score of one, which is, is very good. Zero would be the best. Um, but uh, I, I think we're covering around 80, uh, low 80 percent in terms of uh, funding ratios. Um, so that, that is just something that comes to us annually, and I wanted to make sure, make you guys aware of it. Um, we did receive some correspondence from PennDOT re re related to um, construction of um, uh, the, the bridge at Chartiers or phase two of that Route 50 and Marston Pike uh, intersection, as well as um, uh, the intersection of Mayview and Boyce in terms of their plans to pursue them in 2021. Um, so I thought that was good news. Um, Oak Ridge sent us their monthly report as they typically do. And we got a thank you letter from the library for a contribution to uh, a fundraiser they had. Okay. All right, let's move on to consent calendar items. Um, is our motion to approve the minutes? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to pay the bill. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, financial report. Um, I wanted to make sure you guys knew this was available to you. It, it's a, um, something that uh, with the absence of a finance director, we uh, have, have been a little slow in getting to you, but um, you know, with some guidance from uh, the consultant we've been using and with Shannon's help inside here, uh, we do have a revenue expenditure report for you. Um, I encourage you guys to take a look at it. Um, Nothing really out of the ordinary to to point out, but I uh, just wanted to make sure that you were aware that was there. Um, and we also just include the bank balances uh, for transparency's sake. Um, uh, and they're there uh, on the website as well for anyone to have a look at. Um, that's it, no motions needed for the financial reports, just some transparency and disclosure on, on uh, those items. That's great, John, that you, you have those, that's great. Okay, we're going to move on to department reports. Um, so, building so can I just ask a question on them? And I think it's yeah. good that we have that moving forward. It's a little bit of a newer thing, so not for tonight, but would you be able to have somebody do a five minute, 10 minute overview for the board next month on how to interpret that and what we're actually looking for month to month? Um, with it, any change in what's supposed to balance out, et cetera, on the balance, on the bank balances. If I said that correctly, Sean, you can chime in or John, but I think that would be helpful for everybody. Yep. Yeah, we can absolutely do that, Lisa. And the other thing that you'll have is uh, there'll probably be a, a more accurate picture, just a balance sheet. We're pretty close to uh, being able to okay. show you a balance sheet so you can see, uh, you know, net position. Um, okay. On the, uh, and it's been a uh, modern time, you know, uh, someone for words, but yeah, we can put that together for you. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move to building report per or permit reports, please. Yeah, permits issued are out there. Um, another healthy month. Uh, we had about 15,000, a little over 15,000 in, in revenues. Um, again, most of these um, are uh, single family, um, uh, nothing really non-residential uh, within here. Um, Taking a peek back at, at where we were this month last year, we're, we're slightly be behind uh, in terms of the month, but I will say on, the, on an annual basis, um, despite COVID, um, 
permit fees are actually up slightly from where they were in 2019, which was a little surprising. Uh, but I think that's just a sign of just how active people have been um, and how fortunate we are that uh, uh, projects are, are continuing. Okay. All right, let's move to communications and community development report. Thanks. Andrea, I'll open it up and let you have at it. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, just a couple of highlights from my monthly report. The fall issue of South Fayette Connect Magazine is at the printers right now, and it should be going to the post office around October 23rd for mailing. Um, the mobile app that we're working on developing is called South Fayette Citizen Link, and uh, everything is on track to have that ready um, in the App Store and Google Play in early December. So December, January, we will be working on um, promoting that and getting people to download it. My cat has come to help me uh, do my report. <laughs> <laughs> um, also wanted to mention, um, uh, of course, we know that um, Trick or Treat is on October 31st, but we've also worked with the SNPJ Club um, to participate in their drive through Trick or Treat, um, which will be October 31st from noon to three o'clock. Um, the chief is sending, um, it sounds like, Sergeant Westlick and Ellie the dog right now, and we'll be putting together um, some free South Fayette goodie bags um, uh, with some uh, Parks and Rec and South Fayette merch and police um, items. Um, and uh, my quarter of the report, John, um, also is attached. Uh, lots of just interesting data to see the types of things that um, people are looking at on a quarterly basis and the types of traffic we get. Um, just, uh, you know, one thing to note, um, you know, we, we did, um, I believe it was earlier this year, um, to kind of tip the scale. So uh, around half or a little more than half now of uh, people who are accessing our website are doing it on a smartphone. So that mobile app um, really is timely in that respect. And also um, just want to mention, um, you know, some of the things that I see in my Facebook report are we have, you know, usually between 25 and 30 um, private Facebook messages that come in um, on a quarterly basis of people kind of asking questions around the clock on a 24 seven basis. Um, that's an opportunity, you know, for them to be pointed in the right direction with a question they have. So, um, you know, it's interesting that social media, you know, is being used um, in a lot of different ways. And one of them is, you know, residents reaching out to us with questions. They might see something around the township, have a question about something that's going on on a road. Um, and we're able to, um, you know, respond in a really timely fashion to that. Um, so those are a few of the highlights. I'd be happy to answer any questions or my cat would be happy to answer them. <laughs> Did you start your survey yet? Remember we had talked last month about a survey going out? Yes, uh, the survey is ready to go. It's going to be, uh, the printed version is going to be in the magazine that's coming out. Uh, so the survey um, is going to be kind of released in the first promotional um, post on October 21st. Um, so we're going to um, promote that people can do it online, but then the people who um, prefer to use print will be able to use the business reply envelope and do that in print from the magazine. So that'll be starting um, in just a couple of weeks. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Thanks, Andrea. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move to your Park and Recreations report. Perfect. Um, I just want to um, start off talking about the Fairview Fall Virtual 5K um, that was last two weeks ago. Um, the results are in the end of my report if you want to take a look at it. Um, also, we raised over $1,000 to go towards the playground um, for our matching grant um, at the Fairview Entrance Pavilion. Um, so it kind of replaced, even though we didn't have community day in person, um, this kind of replaced the fundraiser that we usually do with the um, raffle drawing at community day. So we were able to bring in a little bit in um, you know, to go into the community fund, and this is particularly for the playgrounds. Um, I just want to note that the week of the um, race, uh, each day we did a video, and in total we had 2,308 views. So we definitely um, reached, you know, the residents and got some interaction um, through the virtual event. Um, 
Other than that, um, fall programs are underway, both virtual and some in person that are outside um, in, in the park. Um, we were awarded the DCNR grant for the splash pad, which was very exciting. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for my report. I do want to touch on um, any, some, a few other things. Um, any questions on my report before I move on? Yeah. Only, only Gwen, we need to see a bigger smile out of you on that splash pad. I'm so excited. I'm going to be the first one to think through it. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited also. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Um, so on for the first grant we got, the playground, um, we're underway with um, getting that project moving on. John, if you want to pull up some of those um, drawings. This is Fairview. Um, yeah, that's, so that's for Fairview, the entrance pavilion. Um, it, well, there also be a new walkway to give it ADA access. Um, and the other one you have, John, is Boys Home. Now, these are all through CoStar, um, so we won't have to go out to bid or anything like that. I just want to let you know and show you what it's going to look like and colors and everything like this. Um, what's exciting about the Boys Home is that's a fully inclusive playground, so it's all ramps. So it's going to be accessible at any level by anyone nice. with any abilities. So that's, this is going to really be a destination playground that I'm very excited about. Beautiful. Yeah, so nice. we are, we're going to move forward with um, purchasing this equipment. We recommended we do it by the end of the year to secure the 2020 pricing before um, the prices go up. Um, so we'll purchase the equipment and then they'll hold it for us because then construction for like the site probably won't start until early next year. Um, we're going to be putting those out to bid here in the next couple of months. Um, so any questions on either of the playgrounds? No, you did a great job, Paula. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one I other update. Oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead and finish. I'm sorry. I okay. Uh, one other update is the um, playground at Fairview Rotary Pavilion. We'll be closing that down probably at the end of the month um, to get install the port in place rubber. So if you see the playground shut down, that's what we're getting ready to, for. Public Works will be um, tearing up the mulch and then um, Playworld will be coming in installing the surface. And this was all part of the DCNR grant that we received last year. So I just wanted to say that it's just been really cool seeing the splash pad explode into Gwen's brain at, at that convention a couple years ago and then us take our time and do it right and get the grant. And uh, I just really think it's a good way to go about doing things and it's cool to see that it actually worked when we did it right. Yeah. We have a lot of projects coming up and it's gonna be, the kids of the community are really lucky the next couple years to get some of this um, awesome play equipment. Is everyone good with um, the, the playground stuff? You're happy with how it looks and, and placement yes. of it, all that? We're, we're um, when Paula mentions getting it out to bid, mm -hmm. there is some earthwork that goes with the installation uh, along at Boys Home and Public Works is helping out with demolition and uh, access. Um, so hopefully by spring, we'll see these um, playgrounds up and running and being used. And I'm really excited that we integrated some, um, so it's all inclusive for children that have disabilities. They'll be able to use it just as much as everyone else. Yeah, I think Correct. it's, great. it's uh, yeah. great work, you guys. It's fully inclusive. And John, if you can go to the other drawing, the little car, that aero glider, um, it's so, it's, it's a big uh, rocker that actually a wheelchair and kids can all join in together. So um, kids of all abilities can really play together. So that was one piece that um, the DCNR really um, liked on our playground design because of how inclusive it was. Love it. That's great. That's oh. good material too. Play World has good, good equipment. <clears throat> Any other questions? Well, do we want to talk about the race between Chief and uh, Sergeant <laughs> or uh, Lieutenant Lining? Or do we want to save that for Chief's report? <laughs> no, no, awesome. com no comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, got it, I gave it 20 years away, so. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Paula. Great job. Thank yeah. you, Paula. Uh, I see also that, that John has under my report, too, the resolution for the multimodal grant. Yeah, I thought since we're, you know, on the Parks and Rec um, department, might as well 
through the grant uh, application announcement and with it or, or the resolution. Um, so so this, guys, is, this is for, wanted, oh. I'm sorry, I'm talking over you, Paula. Go right ahead, tell them what the, the project is that we were seeking funding for. Sure, so I applied for this grant last year. Unfortunately, um, we didn't get it, um, but I did reach out in, um, to PennDOT and uh, I was encouraged to apply again. They do wanna fund trails and sidewalks, so they said it's definitely a project that um, is of interest of them. Um, so it's, um, I'm just reapplying for the multimodal um, PennDOT grant for trails in Fairview Park that would also connect down um, throughout the park and then down to Mayview Road. When, do you, when are you submitting that? Uh, when, it is due, it's due the beginning of November, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be for the award cycle will be 2021-2022. Uh, so we do need a motion uh, for the resolution. This would be resolution uh, number 15 of 2020. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thanks, Paula. All right. Let's move on to police report. Hello, everybody. Two items tonight. Uh, the first one is all of our officers uh, finish up the training on the body cameras uh, this past Monday and Tuesday. And the program was implemented first thing this morning at 6 a.m. So all of our officers, when they're on duty, will be wearing the body worn cameras that uh, we got for the matching grant uh, a couple months back. And uh, we're really excited about that for furthering the transparency of the department. Uh, the second item I have is uh, for the second year in a row, the police department's going to support cancer prevention and awareness with No Shave November. Uh, starting naturally November 1st, uh, we'll have a competition between our officers again of those that participate, who has the best beard. Um, we set a goal this year, a dollar amount of we want to try to reach $5,000 by the end of November. And anybody that's wishing to make a donation for that great cause uh, would go to the website no-shave.org slash org slash sftwp. And then they can go navigate through that website and click on South Fayette Township and make a donation for, for the um, cancer prevention and awareness. That's all I have tonight. Any questions? No. Yeah. That sounds good, John. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. All right. Let's move to public works report. Yeah, thanks. Which were you able to join us? I'm not positive if I saw you out there. He texted me and said he was uh, having some trouble. Um, I'm getting, good. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yep. All right. Never misses well, a meeting. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to miss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not as flashy as everybody else here, you know, about everything that they've got and everything, but uh, we're still holding our own, doing pretty much the same thing we've been doing. Uh, one thing that I am uh, proud of the guys about is that uh, the roads that were tore up, uh, extremely tore up by the uh, construction of the uh, Beltway, uh, Cecil Raging, Cecil Sturgeon, and also Rickard Till. Uh, in the last month, we've uh, actually did a lot of road repair and did our own ceiling in-house. And if you have, if you've been out there, if you were out there before, it's it's like a difference of night and day. It, it almost looks like a four-lane highway compared to what it used to look like. But I'm really proud of the guys for what they did. They really did a good job, and. Uh, it's not something that we do every day, but uh, it, it turned out fairly nice. And uh, most of the, if not all, the uh, residents out there are pleased. Uh, Which I pulled up on the screen here. I know one thing that um, commissioners had requested was just for us to talk a little bit about the work that's in front of us. Um, as, as you know, we prepare for the, for the winter. You want, you put a list together here. Is there anything you want to highlight um, for everyone? Well, one thing I'd like to say is that uh, at least they held the uh, 
price of per ton per salt for this year. That'll help out a lot. Uh, we are going to demo the playgrounds. Uh, we have some concrete to demo over at Boys Home. That road that comes straight down, uh, we'll be demoing that and getting that out of the way, uh, getting prepared for the installation of that playground. Uh, we'll be going over, it's that time of the year, we'll be going all over the snow uh, removal equipment, the plows, the spreaders, the trucks and the loaders to make sure everything's ready to go. And uh, we will be eventually uh, moving in to mow and clean the uh, township owned retention ponds. Yeah. I think that's um, the other thing I wanted to just um, point out that uh, you guys are doing proactively is looking at our um, paving list for 2021 and um, putting um, the, the storm inlets on those streets if they need to be rebuilt, um, having these guys look at them. Uh, this season, uh, weather permitting, um, so that we can we can just you know mill and pave in the um, in the spring and summer. Right, that'll save a lot of money, and uh, the uh, whoever the contractor is that comes in, they can just go ahead and just start, and we'll have all that uh, work hopefully uh, completed. Yeah, weather weather contingent. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Any questions for for Butch? What? Yep. I missed part of the, the beginning of your, your report, um, but I, I do want to say you guys did a really good job with the catch basins down in Lakemont and also the uh, tar and chipping on the roads um, that are not getting paved. I think you guys did a good job. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. I have, three, I have three things I'm really excited about. One, the cleanup along Washington Pipe Route 50, our business corridor, the grass cutting that the Public Works did, they did a phenomenal job. It looks so clean. I'm getting so many comments on how nice our community looks and who does your grass cutting and how are you getting it done? And we don't want to tell them our secrets, but uh, Public Works is doing a fantastic job. Yeah, don't farm us out. <laughs> um, no way. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is they did a great job in um, – Pulling out the signs at the intersection of 79 um, southbound, right where our South Fayette sign is. People say, people say to me all the time, did we install a new South Fayette sign? No, it's just that you can see it now because there aren't, there isn't debris all over the place. So it's really, everything is cleaning up and it's really looking really nice. And then the third thing is I've heard so many wonderful comments from people on Freedom Drive South about the um, guardrail that was installed. All of the residents came out. They, the Public Works did a nice job on installing that, cleaning up the weeds, and then um, they put asphalt down. And it just looks like it looks like a whole new street. So thank you to everybody. Fantastic job. So if I can just add one thing to that, my neighborhood got paved this year, and uh, there were some people who had some not so thrilled looks on their faces after the pavers came through, and every one of them came up to me afterwards and said, "What a great job." The township did cleaning up, so we all appreciate that too. Absolutely. Good stuff. Thank you, Butch. Thank you. Thank you, Butch. Thank, Thank you, Butch. Okay, let's move to manager's report. Okay, um, well, one of the things I wanted to spend my time uh, speaking with the commissioners tonight is, uh, you know, it's October, it's, it's the kickoff of our, our budget season. And this year, I wanted to really uh, start, start the process as, you know, um, as it's designed, and that's with the, you know, the capital program. I think it's really important to identify what our um, capital needs are over a five-year period of time and not just in one singular year, because um, then you can really recognize what kind of support the general fund needs to give to it uh, for it to, to be implementable. Um, and then once we get there and have that, that dollar amount recognized, then I think we can uh, really get serious about um, uh, budgeting in the general fund. So uh, I wanted to start tonight with, with capital, but um, maybe before we do that, uh, one thing to go over would just be the, the calendar of how I see uh, things playing out for us as we uh, try to adopt our 2021 budget. Uh, so tonight we'll we'll hear about um, the projects that make up our, our five-year capital program. Um, and then my recommendation is about two weeks from this evening um, that we uh, 
convene a workshop meeting here in the building and do as we traditionally do, um, PowerPoint presentation, looking at the general fund um, and spend about um, a good two, maybe two and a half hours uh, together going through the finer details of that. That would set us up to include um, the budget as a discussion item at our November meeting um, and then uh, get together again uh, the week before Thanksgiving um, and kind of put a, uh, an, an asterisk next to um, December 2nd as if, if needed to have one more workshop before we were to adopt it on December the 9th. Um, everyone okay with that schedule? Anyone want to propose anything different for as, as we roll these forward? These are dates that I, you know, I kind of picked um, that, you know, fit with uh, good with my schedule and with the um, different milestones we set for, for staff and getting things together. Um, okay, well, let's jump into the uh, five-year capital. And, and, you know, it's, here's how, let me talk about the process that staff went through to get here and then we can we can go through some of these projects and then I'll uh, kind of give a thumbnail sketch of of how the, the funding and the expenses come together so uh, starting with departments we ask people to think about um, uh, projects that make up uh, either over ten thousand dollars they had to, the, the criteria to be capital would be at least ten thousand dollars and in addition they have to have a uh, five-year uh, useful life um, and uh, they also have to um, uh, be supported by some type of justification. So uh, there has to be a need for it or um, uh, has to be a request. Um, so we took all those, those projects, we refined them, we costed them out the best we could. Um, some of these expenses that you see on here are, are estimates, some are pretty firm numbers. Um, and maybe if I go through kind of the, the first, uh, first so many of them, uh, we can then pause for a discussion. Um, so uh, as you guys know, one of the largest things we're working on um, is the municipal complex, the new municipal site at Hickory Grade Road. Um, we wanted to make sure we accounted for that uh, in the capital plan, certainly is, uh, is a capital expense. Um, right now, the plan would be to uh, use um, uh, funding secured from the sale of the Star City site, which is about $4 million, put it into that, that project. Um, and also, uh, so depleted first before we would, would go to any of our capital reserves or look for any outside funding. Um, uh, the first phase of that project is the earthwork and the site utility work. Um, we estimate that to be about $600,000. Uh, we estimate that, that work to begin in 2021. And that would be something that would come out of that Star City Fund. So that's our, our first project. For each of these projects, we did do a narrative for them. Um, and this is available to you guys as well. So uh, you can see that we gave a, a quick description, you know, a chart of where the expense would be, what our justification would be, and then where the funding would come from. Um, uh, so the next part of that is the building, right? So after the, the earthwork, the building would come next. Um, based upon our initial estimates, you know, we have that um, in the neighborhood of, of seven to $10 million in terms of the, the all-in costs for uh, the building, uh, furnishings, um, the move. Um, uh, there's an ad alternate discussion in, in the police department that has an additional expense. So being conservative, wanted to put um, all those expenses in there, show it on a spreadsheet, and then ha start having some discussions about how we could fund it. Um, we envision that, that taking place over 2021 and into 2022. And um, for the remainder of that, uh, expense to come from uh, some type of borrowing, a tax exempt borrowing. Um, and the thought process there is um, our logic, uh, our strategic plan with the board, with the board has always been um, find an answer to uh, the issue we have with admin and police. And with this scenario, having it moved to a different site, we now open up Miller's Run for the potential of a, a library slash uh, rec building or some type of community center is the, the loose term that, that we, um, we're throwing out there. Um, we're going to talk later tonight about how we kick off that planning process, but wanted to make sure we budget for it in the capital fund. Um, thought process is to have planning dollars in 2021. You know, we put a, a $50,000 amount that, that would allow us to um, uh, get some conceptual plans and maybe even some um, uh, specific 
uh, support with the programming side of it if we're talking about recreation or or or, or not. Um, and then, you know, the cost estimates then would span the next two years, 22 and 23. And um, these, these estimates are pretty rough, right? These are based upon, you know, rough square footage, you know, what we've seen other, other uh, projects come in at in, in different parts of the, the region and the state and otherwise. And the number we come up with is about $20 million. Um, and that would be over a two year period. So um, our thoughts, my thoughts were to look for a borrowing for those, those projects right there, the, the remainder of the uh, phase one of the uh, township building police department and then uh, any new project that would come uh, here at Miller's Run Road. Um, so up top, these are the sources of funds. Um, right here is where we would talk about um, uh, some type of borrowing and how it would, would get layered in. Um, Star City Fund is, is included in that. And then the other things that make it up are, are grant, grants, both secured and pending, and then uh, support from the general fund and our capital reserve. Uh, so we have a schedule here that lays out um, which pools of funds we would use and when they would come into play. Um, any questions on those first three? And, you know, I threw a lot at you with uh, those numbers, and I know that there's a lot that goes into it. So I don't want you to think that you know, decisions have been made or, or anything like that with regards to these big projects. These are placeholders that will allow us to think about how we finance them and how we can think kind of comprehensively about how we go about um, uh, taking on all these capital things um, in a strategic manner. Okay, moving down our project list. Um, next project that we, we have, and this is again something that we would we would plan for before we, we went to construction. But um, we had some discussion just about the, the entrance to the township, thinking of you know, um, 79 and the, uh, the, the jug handle interchange uh, with, with plans for um, that road to be widened and other enhancements um, in that vicinity. Seems like a really good area to do some type of entrance project to the community um, and we wanted to uh, put placeholders in place in 2021 to let us start planning for that um, and then uh, assuming that planning process evolves into uh, a condition we're all happy with um, look to a, a project in the, in the neighborhood of hundred thousand uh, dollars to follow the uh, in 2022 um, there was a time when the township had considered um, new entrance signs throughout and, and a, a consultant was retained to kind of look at where these could be placed. And this was identified that corridor as, you know, really a strategic opportunity for us or a good opportunity to, to um, do some community branding and uh, to do um, some type of nice entrance gateway that could just uh, really draw attention to, uh, to the township. So the timing seems good to start the planning um, uh, right away in 2021 and, and set up to uh, do something of, of scale in, in, in the coming year. Um, that would be funded out of the capital reserve unless we've, we, we found other funding sources. Um, we put an amphitheater in here. Uh, this was um, a request that came from uh, our strategic plans uh, with the board. Um, you know, it, it was a little challenging. Some, when I get into some of the other park projects, it was a little, this one was a little more challenging in that we didn't have, it didn't exist inside of the, the parks master plan for us to say, oh, this is what we think it costs or this is where we think it should go. Um, so Joe, just as you, you know, you pointed out that uh, we took our time with the um, splash pad, found the right spot, uh, looked at funding and secured it. I think that's probably the, the same path we should take with, with the amphitheater. Um, so I did spread, I, I, I feel like there's a, um, a considerable, a, a conservative amount of money there to allow us to do something of scale. Um, you know, depending on the location that we come, we land on, um, there might need to be some, some earthwork. So I wanted to make sure there were revenues available for it. Um, so we include a $300,000 um, allocation and having it take place over two years. Um, other park improvements, um, a cricket field at Boys Home Park, that would need to be laid out a little, little more than it is now. Uh, there is some grading that would go with it. Um, we, we, we feel like that can coincide with, um, with work being done um, uh, with the playgrounds over there. 
uh, and, and the expenditures were spread over two years just to give us the ability to uh, install and then enhance it if we needed to. Um, the capital plan includes some other routine maintenance on a capital nature like restrooms or installation of restrooms. Those are one of the goals we have with the parks are to um, in areas where we're relying on, on uh, port portajons look to in the, in the coming years um, install restroom facilities. Um, the boys home tennis park is a big project. I threw this out. We threw this out into uh, the year 2025. And you know this could be advanced one way or another. Um, you might recall this was this showed up in our comprehensive rec plan as uh, two options. One large option being um, the potential to uh, partner with the school district to install some um, uh, play, uh, tennis courts in Boys Home Park. Um, so the note here says contingent upon funding. And if you look at the revenue side um, on 2025, you'll see a um, and a, a, a large amount here and then footnote just says let's assume that we have a partnership with the school board or the school district and and there's a million dollars um, in support that that would uh, offset our expense because I think we all agreed that um, if we could leverage some other some other dollars to make it be a, a larger project let's do it um, if not let's let's um, you know think about just uh, playing up the, the soccer amenities that are there maybe some tennis but not not full-blown um, so that Putting in the five-year plan gives us the, the flexibility to pursue those discussions and then move it up or down and adjust the costs um, as needed as well. Um, we put the DCNR project in there that Paula spoke about. Um, the contribution is offset with some grant dollars. Um, the remainder of it would be absor absorbed in the capital reserve um, and that is taking place early in 2021. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to uh, a the Fairview projects because I feel like they're um, really important to what we want to accomplish um, on the park development side and are, are something that you know the board should should share the um, be able to share their vision with and, and have this capital budget support it and the first uh, we're talking about Fairview phase one I'm going to pull up the narrative that goes with it so we can um, have an idea what we're talking about but the first part of our um, Fairview projects would be the, uh, the, the, the road that would connect from Mayview to the top of Fairview um, Park because this really allows the other amenities in the park to grow. So um, a, with in addition to the splash pad, the, the ball fields and the other enhancements to the fields up there, um, this this first phase really opens a door for all that and, and that's really where I think our opportunities for funding lie. Um, but I think this first phase is going to have to be um, borne the, the cost entirely by the, the township. I don't think we're going to be able to find too much grant support for in, in, in real infrastructure work like this. Um, we do have estimates for that. We do have consultants that are working on uh, the grading plans and the, um, you know, the design, the layout of it to make that a reality. And this really does become one of our most important projects in, in 2021. Um, and this would connect uh, the, uh, from, from the intersection, uh, the to be constructed intersection on Mayview Road uh, that, that uh, the charter development will support with, pick up from there and take it to the top, um, include also uh, parking and uh, some rough grading for the ball fields. That's a, that's a $1.5 million project. Once we get that in, then phase two would, would kick in and that would be the splash pad that uh, we spoke about. Now that, that is a project that we have received um, grant, uh, a grant award for uh, a little over 300,000 uh, from uh, Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Um, the amount in here is the total cost. So 1.2 million is what the um, uh, consultants cost it out in their opinion of probable cost. It shows up in the, uh, the master plan for Fairview Park um, so we, we, you know, we have a contribution of, of uh, about three uh, nine hundred thousand that's going to have to come from the township. Um, we do have the ability, since that is some time away, you know, we, we could explore some other grants that uh, we could put uh, towards that um, that that township uh, requirement, if you will. Um, if not, then I think we'll be prepared to to move forward with it. The way that the um, document was prepared is we assumed that that would be the only grant we got and, and we found funding within uh, the capital reserve. 
Um, so with all those things, we, we, if, if there weren't um, a real commitments to it, uh, they showed up in a, in a pending uh, line item. So we made some assumptions when we prepared this capital plan because um, in many ways uh, there are projects that um, will depend on on grants for them to be completed um, and to be pursued. So we made an assumption of 500,000 annually of being secured, right? And then in these other years where there's more than uh, 500,000, uh, those were uh, when we were making assumptions about specific projects. In 2024, we we're making an assumption about um, a project to, to install turf at, at Fairview Park. And in 2025, the assumption about the tennis courts. All of those projects, both those projects, I should say, will not be implemented if we don't see that um, that 1.5 million in, in fundraising. Uh, but we wanted to include them in here just so we, we could keep on track and, and uh, identify um, you know, our funding priorities and our, our capital needs. Um, Fairview, uh, Fairview phase three, um, I got off course a little bit, but after, after the splash pads, the, uh, the plan would be to um, install the baseball fields um, with fencing and dugouts and concession stands and, and all the amenities that go with that. I believe there's a, um, uh, some seating and you know, maybe a, a pavilion that can go there too, according to the, the, the comp plan. Um, we wanna time this, this project here. The reason that shows up in, in 2022 um, and we're not pushing it further down the road is um, we, we wanna line it up with uh, work to be done at Morgan Park um, the Morgan Park project calls for a reduction of baseball fields from five to three. And we didn't want to have a scenario where we were short of fields in any one season. So we wanted to, to um, uh, kind of sync up the installation of three fields um, in Fairview with the removal of two at, at Morgan. So that's why those two show up in the same year because we, we want to try to make those, those happen together. Um, so we have a really aggressive park improvement schedule. Um, all of those are, all the projects are, are laid out in, in these narratives. Um, for the most part, they line up with the um, parks master plan with the exception of, um, uh, of the amphitheater that we're pursuing. Um, and they require a good amount of investment and hopefully we can, we can stay successful with the, the fundraising side of it as well, because that will allow us to, to do this um, in a rapid manner. Any questions on anything inside of the parks? The things that I didn't touch on were, um, you know, more of the routine stuff like the installation of bathrooms, um, uh, so like maintenance to uh, uh, the existing ball fields at Fairview and uh, tennis courts uh, updating, things like that. We want to make sure we get those in the plan, but I didn't really highlight them because, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not new or, or uh, new projects. They're, they're maintaining of existing. I don't, I don't know if you consider like naming rights or anything like that or some corporate sponsorships maybe for some of the park stuff, but you know, I see other places doing that. So I think that's something we should consider as well. Absolutely. Maybe. Yeah. And now that we have an idea of what projects we're, we're going to work on, it makes it so much easier to go after grant money because you have to have, you have to know what you're ready to start and what you want to do before you can go after those grants. So this really helps open that door too. No doubt, that's great. So John, John just a couple of questions. Did you, did, you, did you guys put this together yourselves internally? Uh, we, I mean, we had some, some help, but mostly it's from ourselves. I mean, we had some help in that these estimates came from consultants in some instances. Um, I, mean, I, I should have prefaced that with saying that I think, I think, <laughs> not I think, but for the first time, at least since I've been participating, this is the absolute best financial planning document that we've had, um, which I think, you know, the, my Gwen and Joe have said, I mean, we can actually start to realistically plan what we can and can't do and how we are, you know, I like to say how we can do what, what we think the community wants, but I think this is an incredibly helpful document for us. Um, so good, good work on putting it together, actually. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, um, it was definitely a team effort. Um, thank you for, for pointing that out. I mean, um, 
I think it's important to, to think about it in that that five year window because there's so there's so many projects. So, so trying to get yeah, that. So the, you know, the, 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 once once I got myself off the floor from the when I looked at the amounts, um, yeah. and I, and I say that kiddingly, we are in a nice financial position. Um, my only comments that would be more helpful is in the notes section where you have. Um, you know, existing grant balance from capital. I don't know what that split is. Um, that would be helpful if there was a col column that, you know, could predict that out. If, um, what, yeah. if, how much has to come from capital? I know you probably have that figured somewhere. You're talking about this mm -hmm. line right here? So, yeah, that would be an example. Well, no, you have it there. Look up more. Okay. Look at DC oh, this right here. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. Or, um, you know, DCGE secured in two, two I know we have part of a grant for that. But yeah. Um, that would be really, really helpful as well. Um, I don't know. I think you did a good job. And then the additional pages with the detail on it really, I think, are very helpful. So so good work to you and, and everyone who participated. Yeah, so, thank you for that. Yeah, Go thank ahead. you. Thank you, John. So I know I say this stuff a lot, but nine years ago, we couldn't afford a used police car. To, so <laughs> seeing this list just makes me ecstatic and I, I I'm just so happy with how far we've come and how great things are going and it's, uh, Joe, it's really I, cool. I second that like I'm almost kind of struggling for words looking at the document remembering like we didn't yeah yeah and good job everybody well yeah there and there's some work to be done here I mean um, if we just take the a, a few minutes to talk about the funding that's needed to support all these so the price tag's big you're right Lisa I mean 46 million dollars is huge um, 23 of it are, are those, those two capital things. Um, so, you know, I, the other part of that too is we, we shouldn't just think, oh, well, we're going to borrow for that. We don't have to worry about it because there will be debt service that comes with it and we have to, we'll have to roll that in um, to the general fund budget. Um, but it, we will, it does seem attainable, right? I mean, um, it, it is assuming that the general fund will contribute 1.5 million annually towards capital projects, which does seem you know, reasonable. Our, our current year budget in 2020, we have 1.6 budgeted to support capital projects and, you know, we were able to balance it. So um, there's, there's, it's built into the, to the uh, budget right now. So we should be able to do that. The, the capital reserve, however, um, I, I re really, the way I did this is I put these other numbers in and then to balance, I just had it all come out of capital reserve. Now, the reality is we don't quite have that much money there now. Um, and while we'll probably add to it with year-end surpluses, um, we do want to be mindful of two things. One, we want to be mindful of our fund balance policy and not drop that capital reserve below um, the, the uh, levels we agreed we would keep. And, and two, we also want to make a you know, determination of, yes, we definitely want to deplete the fund balance for these projects. And um, uh, as we go I, forward. I would, say, I would say a couple of things, at least from my perspective. I mean, th this is a capital planning document. It is not a capital budgeting document right. that anybody's approving at this point in time, correct? Yeah, absolutely right. Okay, yeah. so just, you know, we're not saying that that's the number because it's in this document we're spending. It's a planning document. The next steps would be to actually dig into the detail and the numbers and what remains, what doesn't remain, yeah. what we, how we would um, finance or pay for, um, th those, those are all the future steps. Again, this is a fabulous document because in the past we couldn't even really have those conversations because we didn't have anything like that. So I would just make sure that we're all on the same page that this is a, a capital planning document. It's not a capital expenditure plan that we're approving today. You know, yeah, that's right. You're system. absolutely Any right. And, and here we... is a go. And additionally, I think the part that, you know, and Gwen, I'm sure you have a lot to add in here, is, you know, we're looking at some big dollars here, but we don't have all the, the grants that we would be seeking um, to assist us in, in, in completing any of this at this point in time. But they're out there, correct? There's so much out there. I mean, I'm looking at, I'm looking at I mean, just, just for starters, we could go after RCAP because the township has not asked for RCAP money. Yeah, so again, just for anybody that's paying attention to this right now, this is a planning document. It's not a, today we're saying this is what we're spending in the next five years, because that is a big number. 
Um, well, this, yeah, that's, that's and a good we have point. to still dig very, very deeply into the finances. Since we're talking about this right now, I'll just throw in, I was going to save it for our comments. You know, we had all talked about a finance committee early on, COVID came, we kind of parked it. I would like to re-engage us in that process and suggest or ask John to see who was uh, interested, uh, put that back out, because this is where some real, you know, community-based finance professionals can be a extra set of eyes on this kind of thought and conversation and uh, make recommendations advisory only uh, that would really help us to be extraordinarily thorough in all this process and working to get this kind of stuff accomplished. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. This, this gives us, this, this is a nice working document that puts it on paper. So we're all working together towards accomplishing these things. And it, it gives us it gives us things to shoot for. Like now that I know, you know, that we're really looking at an amphitheater and I have some cost estimates, you know, now I can go and I can say, okay, so we know we're gonna need three hundred thousand dollars for that project. Let's go find the money. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I think it's great. Yeah, and just to your point, Lisa, with every one of these projects, um, before they would even get close to the implementation phase, they're being presented to you. A lot of them will come to you for, um, you know, they would need to either be bid or, or advertised or whatnot. So um, you're absolutely right that, you know, what, this is the, the plan and then one by one, there'll be a review process with you guys before they're, you know, they're put in motion or implemented. I think you did a great job, you and your team. Okay, um, do you want me to keep going through these or do you want to move on at this point? Uh, I can do whatever you, you'd like. Do you have additional items down there that you want to go through? I mean, the uh, after we get through the park stuff, you know, there are just a few. Um, the, the the items on the police side aren't very costly, but they do show up in here. Um, I do want to point out before we get off parks, maybe that um, we did make a, a conscious effort to not just put all of our investments um, into Fairview, that the, uh, some of the neighborhood parks or all the neighborhood parks um, are getting the the attention that they deserve as well so you'll see Sturgeon Park show up, Preservation Park, uh, Morgan Park, Boys Home Park, they're all showing up in here as okay. well. Um, and then you know Public Works uh, we included a few things in here out that there's kind of the routine um, replacement of equipment and vehicles that show up. Um, we do have some requirements that we have to make sooner rather than later uh, while this project isn't terribly expensive, this roughly $40,000 um, uh, project scheduled for 2021 is needed, right? This is something that, that showed up in our um, uh, MS4 field view uh, audit, if you will. Um, just, we have a, a problem with uh, our, our floor drains uh, not being uh, pr uh, appropriately connected to the sanitary system. Um, so we do have to uh, make that a priority for us. So you'll see that project advancing uh, early in 2021 for you guys to review and approve. Um, uh, we did spell out the, the equipment and the replacement schedules. Um, we can share with you, you know, kind of the detail behind that uh, in terms of individual vehicles, which ones are being replaced and put out of um, the circulation and which ones are new. Um, so if you wanted to look at that detail, we can, we can share it with you as well. Um, I guess that's about it. I mean, I, I, I think that maybe a good exercise before we get together again uh, would be for you guys to spend a little bit of time with the, the narrative side of these, kind of line it up with the, the expenses over here, you know, redline this document or um, circle things that you have questions on. I'll go through this notes section. I mean, it, now that you said that, Lisa, I realize like I've made this strictly for my own selfish purposes and, and they make sense to me, but I'll flush them out a little more and um, give you some more insights into which, which projects have grants, how much grants, how much is remaining. Um, yeah, I would just create another column. I mean, I think this is a, an excellent working document that we can all work from. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that's, that's mainly what I was looking to accomplish tonight with the capital side. I wanted to give you just the idea of uh, how much, how aggressive a plan we have, what our, um, that's not, what our expenditure levels are, are projected to be, how much we'll need to fundraise, and how much we'll need out of the general fund and capital reserve. 
Um, next time we get together, um, if, if we, it is for a workshop meeting, it will be to explore the, the general fund. We'll have um, all those, we're, we're just about there, but we'll have everything uh, kind of mapped out in draft form. If we can get it to you in advance, we will. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll treat it the same way as we had in the past. We'll uh, do a PowerPoint, kind of highlight the highs and lows and the uh, decisions that the board's gonna be asked to make. And um, hopefully um, it's a somewhat smooth process. Uh, and, um, just haven't been this far through it. Doesn't seem like there's um, any anything really radical new or uh, major, major obstacles we're gonna have in terms of balancing. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I, I'm probably good there. We, we included, we bumped my report up to the top here just to allow us to have that discussion. But um, unless you guys have questions of me, I'll just uh, let us get into the agenda items. Okay. Great. Thank you, John. Yeah. So you want to just move past the request tracker report? Now? Oh, sure. Fine. Um, request tracker is just for your information. Uh, this is just a, a breakdown of all the. Um, inquiries we've gotten through the website and the request tracker. A lot of them were just requesting recycle bins or, or uh, trash not picked up um, and a couple other odds and ends. Um, nothing uh, too voluminous. This is a relatively slow month. Um, yeah, man, it's the sort of we call. <laughs> yeah, any questions on request tracker? No. No, we're good. All right, well, let's move on. Since there's no any, there's no old unfinished business, let's move to new business. Item A, discuss and consider SP07-2020 and CU03-2020 land development and conditional use application for GSL landscaping business located on Cecil Sturgeon Road, zoned PEG. Okay, so before we get into that, do we have Pat Cooper back or not? I am back. Okay. Pat, can you report what you, uh, the conversation with Mr. Kosky? Yeah, I, I, I sent that John, he just brought up the, the site plan itself. Um, I, I could not get on to the county's website on this little home computer right now, couldn't zoom in. But I do know that the, the current website matches our subdivision plan that we recorded a year or two ago. And we found no evidence of a public or private right of way through the property. Having said that, uh, you know, any, if you want to make a condition of any approval tonight that we will honor any existing right of ways through the site, we, we will do so and then we'll, we'll do more research and, and speak with the, uh, the neighbor here and, and uh, proceed. Okay, so is it possible? Is it possible to point out where Mrs. Sastrich's home is in relation to this project on this map? It's, a, it's on the bottom of the page somewhere. I think it might be almost directly across from the driveway. Yeah, right about in the middle, you can see the home there. Right here. Is that where we're talking about? Yes. And then there, there appears to be a driveway. Um, if you enter the site near that home and uh, you come up the proposed driveway, there's a little bit of a bend to the left first, and then, uh, then it goes into a steeper bend. But before that, there's, a, there's a, what appears to be, from the existing conditions, a driveway or a, a dirt road that perhaps takes off and heads down parallel to the creek and the roadway past the pond and then connects back up to Miller's Run Road beyond that bridge. Um, there is a possibility that's the driveway she's talking about. I don't know the condition of it. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know if there's rights that that neighbor has to it that, that I can't answer at this point. But there is a driveway there. Um, and I believe if, Pat, if you're, if you're agreeing that uh, if, if in fact she has rights that you're willing to maintain those, even if you create a portion of it out and you have to reconstruct a portion past your pond that you're proposing, um, I think we can make this work, commissioners. Um, it, it, it would behoove this particular, 
person doing this landscaping business to, to likewise, if this is a quote emergency access, maybe this is a great idea to keep this thing open just for them also if this tunnel gets blocked for some reason. Yeah, and, and keep, keep in mind if, if there is an emergency, uh, I don't think that the police or the fire are gonna contact GSL to ask permission to cross the property. They'll, they'll just do it. True. True. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd like to see them have at least a way out in case the other area gets shut down. Just some type of dirt road, gravel road, something that, you know, they have access to, to leave the area. I, I agree, Keith, but we can't require somebody to do something on their private property. No, I know. I just a request, not a yeah. not a demand or anything. Just consideration for people that live there. That's all. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so right now, all we're considering is the conditional use. It's the actual use on the property. Um, Pat has agreed to make it a condition to to comply with any rights that you may have in any private road or access through this property. So, I think that resolution is appropriate. So then what should the motion be for this problem? Okay, so it's motion to approve uh, SP07-2020 and CU-03-2020 land development and conditional use application for GSL landscaping business located on Cecil Sojourn Roads and PD, subject to the engineer's uh, a review letter and conditions that he set forth and described during the public hearing, as well as the condition that the property owner uh, recognize any private rights that the adjoining property owner may have for emergency access through his property. And Bob, if I may clarify that this conditional use is for the planned commercial development use and the SP application is for the, the resultant land development for the landscape business. Okay. I would make that motion. Uh, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, discuss and consider SP 06-2020 Montessori School, JED3 LLC, preliminary and final land development plan. Okay, commissioners, uh, I can follow up with this one. This is a preliminary and final uh, approval recommendation for the conversion of a single family home into a private school. The commissioners had previously granted this as a conditional use application. So what we're looking at this evening is the land development portion of the application. They are uh, providing a, a new parking lot uh, expansion of the of the system, stormwater management facilities, and other related land development. Uh, the, the planning commission recommended this at its September 24th meeting, uh, subject to the finalization of the comments from the KU resource letter of July 16, 2020. Uh, I have spoken with the applicant a couple of times. We've worked together. She is working diligently to have these things done. Jennifer's been very cooperative in, in this. Um, and the, the presentations made at the Planning Commission, there was three additional trees requested based on the number of parking spaces, and they've agreed to find a place on this site that you're looking at now uh, to place those three trees. There were no other uh, waivers or modifications necessary. Um, for this particular site. So you're fine with us approving? I, I am. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to consider SPS 6 2020 Montessori School JED3 LLC preliminary and final land development plan? I'd make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Um, item C. Discuss S-04-2020 Rickards Hill Preliminary and Finer Minor Subdivision. Okay, commissioners, uh, this is for the Rickards Hill plan, specifically lots um, six, 
seven and 10, I believe it is, um, on Cecil Rising Road. I'm sorry, eight, nine, and 10 um, on, on what's actually Rickards Hill Road. Uh, the county assessments webpage is, is incorrect and it's caused a little bit of confusion here. What happened was the Southern Beltway took out a portion of this site. As you're looking at the map that's, uh, in front of you, it says Pennsylvania Turnpike Southern Beltway. Uh, they took out the center of this site and cut the rear ends off of these particular lots. So a portion of this that lies in Washington County, Cecil Township, they're intending to combine those pieces and uh, create a, another subdivision on the other side of the county line, which is only associated with us because it's remnant parcels to what you're looking at. The oddity to this subdivision is that we're clarifying lines that are already created by the taking by the Turnpike Commission. However, on lot 10R at the top of the, the subdivision there, that particular lot, when the turnpike came through, they took out the septic test drip areas that had been tested and approved for that lot. Lot eight and nine still have those test areas remaining. However, they are of an age where they must be updated. They intend to sell these lots off. So those, those existing fields must be retested and approved. And lot 10, they're gonna have to find completely new test uh, a new test pit drip area that satisfies the requirements of the DEP. So this, this particular subdivision is going to be subject to my review of September 20th, uh, KU Resources review of September 20th, 2020. It also uh, requires uh, the waiver for the survey monument requirement under two 1563 and iron pins to be set on lot corners in lieu of those concrete monuments and also a modification waiver to 21567A5 which requires sidewalks within a land development plan. There's no sidewalks out in this area whatsoever. It is going to take them some time to do the septic testing so this this conditional approval is going to hang for a while before you see the actual plan for recording presented for signature. But it, I believe the rest of it is in line, uh, Madam Chairman, that uh, th this plan should be able to move ahead. Okay, great. So do we have a motion to approve S-04-2020 Rigards Hill preliminary and finer minor, minor subdivision? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item D, discuss and consider a service agreement from Kimmel Bogret for design, for design services for the Miller's Run Road project. Just to introduce this a little bit, um, Kimmel Bogret is the firm we're working with currently on the design of the municipal complex police building at um, Hickory Grade Road. Um, we thought it made sense to uh, allow them to plan for the future use of the Miller's Run Road site um, as they will you know, uh, be involved with us and, and our new facility. So uh, this is a proposal for them to take us through a similar process and, and to start it um, you know, immediately. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve a service agreement from Kimmel Bogret for design services for the Miller's Run Road project? I make that motion that we approve them. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Item E, discuss and consider an agreement with CEC for grading plan construction documents. Yeah, this is related to the Hickory Grade site. This would be um, this proposal, uh, the takeaway document or the um, the tangibles they provide us would be a, a you know grading plan and a, um, a construction plan or utility plan that we would set, put out for bid. Um, so uh, they're beginning to work on this. Um, we want to formalize this by getting on the record with the commissioners, but um, we, we are hopeful that we'll be able to, to put a, um, a project out for bid uh, before the end of the year to, to start shortly thereafter, most likely in the, in the, the winter of 2021. Okay. All right, well, is there a motion to um, approve an agreement with CEC for grading 
plan construction documents. I make a motion to agree with CEC for the agreement. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll see you motion passes. Item F, discuss and consider advertising hearing RF. All right, cool. Yep, um, I'm, I'm asking us, I'm asking the board to consider um, advertising a request for a proposal for third party engineering services. Um, KU is representing us on the land development side uh, right now. Um, we've recently had a departure of our in house engineer, and um, you know, we do use um, different third parties for various aspects, whether it be stormwater um, or traffic. Um, so the thought is that, uh, you know, these next two, um, issues go hand in hand, but the thought would be to um, to issue an advertisement to firms for requests for proposals um, and then uh, enter into to discussions with them with the board to uh, bring everything under, um, you know, one independent um, firm as opposed to piecemeal. Okay. Um, do you uh, can I have a motion to approve advertising for an engineering RFP? I make a motion to approve for engineering services. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item G, discuss and consider advertising for the director of planning position. I'd make that motion. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item H, discuss and consider advertising a public works position. I'm sorry, guys. When did we discuss the director of planning position? Yeah, we can we can um, catch up on it at an executive session, or I, I can talk through it now if you, if you'd like. Well, I'm just not quite sure because I've never heard of that before, and it's on the agenda, and all of a sudden we like I'm just confused. Well, it is it is personnel. Why don't we? Um, pick it up in executive session. I know that there was a motion and a second. Um, I mean, you guys already approved it, so I guess it really doesn't matter, but I'd just to bring up for the record that that's the first time I'm hearing of that. I know we've talked about some other things, but I'm just concerned how something related to personnel is coming up in this fashion again. It's first I'm seeing it. Can well, this is a, an, um, I would say this is, you know, this is an advertisement, right? So we're, we're starting a process. We certainly would, um, you know, include the board in that process, but this is just a way for us to, um, you know, well, fill when up anybody that. have any comments? Everybody approved that pretty quickly. Just yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I recommendation I, to John because of the change and going to ha have any has it has anybody talked about this prior to tonight? No, specifically a director of planning. No, no, not that name. No, no, but I knew we were hiring someone to one of those positions and if that's I was pretty I comfortable think it with it. Be prudent before we advertise for a position that has a title of a director of planning because of you know previous personnel conversations that it would go through a, a conversation because that involves a job, job description it, 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 it involves a lot more so I'm just again I'm just I just want to bring that up um, well, I, again, I, I, John had mentioned we were going to talk about an executive session. I figured um, there'd be some more discussion about how we wanted to go with that. I, I should, we can always decide not to advertise, but I figured authorizing him to advertise was not going to change the world at this point. We could always change our mind. I agree with Joe. That's the only reason I did it. But if you want to talk more about it now, I don't have a problem with that either. No, I was just giving John the ability to tee it up and let's get it advertised so we're not losing another month before we... I, I, but again, a director of planning is very different than an assistant manager or a, a, a finance position. Like, is this the same position? Is this a different position? I just, I think it's, it's, it's prudent to have a conversation about what the direction is, even if it's been discussed and already talked about, but to have a conversation with all of us about that um, because this specifically says director of planning. So is this a, a new position? Um, yeah, and I think that conversation was going to... That should be I discussed think, in, in, in executive session, like all personnel issues, before we advertise anything that has a... Right, but we won't be back in the meeting unless you want to come back and then we could always hold it for after executive session. I just figured we're not 
passing anything. We're just advertising. If we change our mind, we can always do that. But it'd be better to pass it than wait a month to advertise. We're looking to get a new engineer anyway kind of thing. And so I thought that was all tied into one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they do tie together. Um, I, I, I do understand Lisa's point. I, I tried to address it in, in my written report. I know that's probably not sufficient. Um, so, you know, I, I, my plan was to cover this in an executive session with you guys later tonight. Uh, I certainly won't take any action based on what you guys did until we, you know, we see the, the uh, consensus is there uh, during exec. So um, probably the, the procedurally, um, we, we shouldn't have done it this way. Uh, so I apologize to you for that. Um, but yeah, our, our thought is here, we have a void and we have an urgent need. So we wanted to um, move with some urgency. Um, that's why there's like a twofold process here with um, the RFP and the, and the advertisement. Okay, Did, I mean, I thought we already talked about the public works position too, but do we need to discuss that or can I make a motion? Public works was supposed to happen by June, but because of COVID, we were set back on that. So I assume the same thing that we would just, it would be brought up again and they need an extra guy. Yeah, we would, uh, you're right, it did show up in the 2020 budget. Uh, we delayed it uh, for COVID reasons. Um, so we just, we wanted to put an ad out now, try to get someone on before, before winter if we could. So I'd make the motion to advertise that as well. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passed. Um, let's move on. Any public comment this evening? All right, seeing as there's no public comment, is there any board discussion? Um, I do have one thing. Um, what, it's actually two, but it's both tied to the upcoming election. Um, one, I was notified by the Board of Elections that all polls in um, South Bay Township will be open for this election, unlike the primary where everybody had to go to the school. You can go back to your normal polls. Um, and number two, I was notified today that there were numerous areas in South Fayette that were affected by the mail-in ballots. Um, there were multiple people that received the incorrect ballot. Um, John, if you want me to, I can give you the list of streets where people were impacted that did not receive the correct ballot. There's no action that needs to be taken. The elections board has assured me that they're aware of who it is and they will be resending the correct ballots to them and there will be time to fill them out and send them back. But just to put it out there in case anybody has any questions and so that they're aware. Um, I don't know if that's something you want to post out. Yeah, send me what you have. It'd be good to, to know where it was so we can answer questions if they come in. Okay. Um, I did want to mention one thing. I'm sorry, I, I forgot to previously. Just a, an FYI, uh, you may see some activity um, along um, Miller's Run at the Old Star City site. We got contacted by the new property owners. Uh, you've noticed the fencing around the site. I think they're going to be mobilizing equipment and uh, looking to... Um, to, to begin, um, you know, moving some earth around uh, pretty soon. So just wanted, if you got questions, uh, just wanted you to be aware that um, we have been in contact with them, um, putting the developer's agreement in place, working through their, um, their submissions for uh, various permits, but uh, you'll see activity soon. That's exciting. John, I did have a question. Um, do you have any updates with Newberry? Anything where that's headed or any, any information you can share with us? Um, so one thing to, to share related to that would be planning commission agenda um, next Thursday does have uh, BJ's, BJ's Wholesale Club on it uh, within Newberry Market. Um, so there is plans to move forward that that tenant does seem to be secured. Um, so yeah, that depending on how long it takes to, uh, to review that at the planning level, it'll come to the board of commissioners shortly thereafter. Okay, and good, thank you. If people didn't already notice, it was in the paper this Sunday that it is officially going, the property is officially going to sheriff sale on November 2nd. So the banks are really moving forward and I expect good things from Newberry as well in 2021. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Thank you. Anything else from anybody? All right, let's move to solicitor's report. Well, uh, John kind of gave my report because I just wanted to report the developer's agreement with Newberry, well, not Newberry, with Star, with, for the PAs of property was signed by the Scalo group. It's been submitted to the township. I think the only thing we're waiting for, and it's supposed to come later this week, is the uh, the performance bond for the improvements on the property. And now uh, they are moving forward in a rapid fashion, so that's good. That's all I have to uh, report this evening. That's great. Okay. All right. And we do have executive session items to this evening, Kirk John. So yes. personnel, just personnel related? Yes. Okay. Great. Right. Uh, motion to adjourn without coming back. Make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming and attending. <laughs>